Montford Point Marine Gunnery Sergeant LaSalle Arval about his Montford Point experiences. In 1998, Paris Island Drum Major Staff Sergeant Vernon Harris composed the music to this march. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Brigadier General Julian D. Alford, Commanding General, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Corps Base, Camp Lejeune, North Carolina, and Sergeant Major Retired Johnny B. Young, Jr., President, Montford Point Marine Association, Incorporated, Camp Lejeune, Chapter 10, welcome to this morning's eighth annual Montford Point Marine Day Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to acknowledge that this year we're also celebrating the 75th anniversary of the Montford Point Marines, 1942 to 2017. We are pleased that you have joined us for today's special occasion. I am Master Gunnery Sergeant Joseph G. Lawrence, and I will be serving as your narrator for today's ceremony. I am especially proud and honored to be serving today as my father, Joseph Franklin Lawrence, was a Montford Point Marine Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the invocation by Mr. Johnny Peterson, Chaplain, Montford Point Marine Association Incorporated, Chapter 10, and remain standing for the playing of our national anthem. Let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you, Father, for so much. We thank you each and every day that you have blessed us, Father. Lord, we thank you that they are gathered here today, Lord, Father, we ask that we remember that we never forget, Father, the price that was paid. Lord, we ask that you continue to bless each and every one that's here, Lord. Father, you have your way. Let your will be done in our lives as you continue to bless this nation, Father, because we need you. In your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. March on the colors.
Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. In your program, you will find a copy of the first Marine Day resolution, which states in part, whereas on June 25, 1941, President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued Executive Order 8802, which established the fair employment practices that began to erase discrimination in the armed forces. Whereas in 1942, President Franklin D. Roosevelt issued a presidential directive that integrated the United States Marine Corps. Whereas approximately 20,000 African American Marines received basic training at Montford Point in the state of North Carolina between 1942 and 1949. Whereas during World War II, African American Marine Corps units fought and served in the Pacific Theater participating in the liberation of the Elise Islands, and Antiwak Atoll, the Marshall Islands, the Kalawajin Atoll, Iwo Jima, Peleliu, the Marineras Islands, Saipan, Tinian, Guam, and Okinawa. Whereas the sacrifices dedicated to country and perseverance of the African American Marines trained at Montford Point Camp are duly honored and should never be forgotten. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Senate, one, designates August 26 as Montford Point Marines Day, two, recognizes the work of the members of the Montford Point Marine Association in honoring the legacy and the history of the United States Marine Corps, ensuring that the sense of duly is shared by the Montford Point Marines is passed along to future generations, and three, recognizes the example set by the Montford Point Marines who served during World War II, helped shape the United States Marine Corps, and provides an excellent opportunity for the advancements of persons of all races and expresses the gratitude of the Senate to the Montford Point Marines for fighting for the freedom of the United States and the liberation of the people of the Pacific, despite the practice of segregation and discrimination. At this time, please allow me to introduce our official party. We ask that you hold your applause until all have been introduced. Brigadier General Julian D. Alford, Commanding General, Marine Corps Installations East, Marine Base Camp Lejeune. Sergeant Major Retired, Johnny B. Young, Jr., President, Camp Lejeune, Chapter 10. Commissioner Jack Bright, Chairman, Onslow County, Board of Commissioners, Councilman Bob Warner, representing the city, the mayor of the city of Jacksonville, Master Sergeant Retired Forrest E. Spencer, Jr., President, National Montford Point Marine Association, and our keynote speaker for today's ceremony, Colonel David P. Grant, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools, Camp Johnson, formerly Montford Point Camp. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our official party. We are elated to have several original Montford Point Marines in attendance today. They are seated under the center tent. Ladies and gentlemen, the Marines of Montford Point. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now have greetings from Brigadier General Alford. Well, good morning. It's a blessed day we have here today, and uh, it's an honor for me to, to be here as the new base commander. So let's start with a couple of uh, welcomes, and Commissioner Bright and all of our elected officials from the Monslow County and uh, the city of Jacksonville. It's good to see you all here. We got uh, Brigadier General Langley and Maxwell with us here today. Thanks for coming, my, my good friends there. But most importantly, I want to say welcome to the three Montford Pointers we have here, Gunny Hooper, Sergeant Spencer, and PFC Preston. It's an honor to be standing here in front of you today. Thank you for having me. Like you heard, this is the 75th anniversary of the Montford Point Marines. Uh, we're here to celebrate these warriors and what they did for our country and our core. 
You know, uh, 12 of my th almost 30 years in the Marine Corps has been right here at Camp Lejeune. And during that time, I couldn't help but think about the influence that the Montford Point legend had on me as a young Marine as I came up through the ranks. And, and, and the legacy that has been left to our Corps and our country that these fine men endured and put on us. You know, like you said, between 1942 and 1949, it was a time in America of segregation, especially here in the South. Approximately 20,000 African American men who wished to serve their country during that time joined the United States Marine Corps. They found themselves segregated from their white counterparts in their initial training during boot camp and were sent here to train at Montford Point. Most of these men went on to fight, as you heard, in World War II. We had, they fought in Korea and they fought in Vietnam. And many gave the ultimate sacrifice during those three wars. These 20,000 men, they found the courage and determination and the grit to overcome the difficulties and struggles of racial inequality. Ultimately, they earned the respect of their fellow Marines and their fellow countrymen. Six years ago, the Congressional Gold Medal was authorized by Congress to honor these great men, to honor their distinguished service, their achievements, and their incredible impact on the American military history. You know, this is now my fifth, year, fifth tour here at Camp Lejeune. And since the last time I was here, this beautiful monument we're standing, that we're sitting around was constructed in a very short period of time. As you look around, what a great testament to the Montfort Point Marines that we have here. The challenges that they overcame, the sacrifices that they gave to this country, and the achievements that they accomplished. What a tangible way for our current and future generation of young Marines to learn about the dedication and perseverance that put an end to segregation and paved the way for equal opportunity in our Corps. Thank you to all that are here today for your continued support to this great monument, and most importantly, to the Montford Point Marines. And taking the time to listen to their stories, remember their challenges, their sacrifices, and most importantly, their achievements for our Corps and our country. Because of them and all that they went through, our younger generations are able to serve freely without segregation in any manner. To the Montford Point Marine heroes sitting here with us today, thank you, gentlemen, for who you are, what you did, the impact you had on changing American and changing our Corps for the better. Our Corps remains indebted to you and the families of those who have gone. What a proud legacy you left for our Corps. Again, thank you and Semper Fidelis. Thank you, Brigadier General Alford. Next, please welcome President of Camp Lejeune, Chapter 10, Johnny B. Young, Jr. Good morning, everyone. To the general officers, dignitaries, families of Moffat Farm Marines, original Moffat Farm Marines, Ladies and gentlemen, it is indeed an honor and a privilege to stand before you today as we celebrate the 75th anniversary of the Muffin Points and the events that led it thereafter. I am honored to select General Alfred to be here and to witness history once again. On behalf of Mock Farm Marine Association, Chapter 10, and Auxiliary. We would like to welcome you to this event. And we are honored that you took time out from your busy schedules to come and help, help us celebrate this historical occasion. Because this is not only Marine Corps history, it is national history. And generations after these generations pass on, we hope that they can read the history books and smile that here on this day and this time, 
that we took the time out to honor our American heroes and we continue the legacy of the Marfa Point Marine. Please understand that we welcome all of you to join our membership. And we pray that your day will be blessed by your presence here. Thank you and welcome. Thank you, President Young. Now please welcome Commissioner Bright to the podium. Thank you. Hard to follow uh, General Alford's kind words. Thank you, sir, for your information and uh, opening speech that you gave. Thank you, Johnny, for your kind words and giving us a little bit of history about the uh, Muffin Point Marine Association membership. It's always good to see you. A lot of the uh, words that's already, that were said already would, has some of the things I had planned on saying. I'd like to uh, welcome all of the uh, folks that came from uh, out of the county and out of the city to the uh, Muffin Point uh, 75th anniversary ceremony. Thank you for, for all of you for coming. It's a pleasure to see you again. I was here last year and uh, we had always have a good turnout. Thank you for uh, attending this event and uh, witnessing this beautiful monument that we have here be behind us and the walls that uh, depict the, uh, the people that served. It was uh, a long time coming that this memorial came about and uh, a lot of people had input in it, the uh, city, the county, and other organizations that contributed to make this monument uh, a reality like all the other monuments that's out here. Uh, they are absolutely uh, pleasing to look at and uh, pleasing to visit. And I don't come by here ever and not see this place uh, with people out looking at this particular monument. Uh, it's uh, exposed to uh, Highway 24 and uh, the people that come by here get to, get to see and see what we're doing here. And, I think it's a big uh, attraction for Onslow County and the city of Jacksonville. And like other monuments, um, this monument uh, tells a story. It really does. If you see the stars over here that indicate the uh, number of Muffa Point Marines that were uh, originally stationed here, and then the uh, monument behind me that shows that uh, the people that worked here and enlisted here. It was a uphill, to me, that looks like it was an uphill struggle and an uphill battle to maintain uh, the integrity of the Marine Corps. And uh, it was just uh, really good to see this monument and the design of this monument with the engineers and the folks that were behind putting it together. So my hat's off to you for the ones that were in, in process of doing that. I have, uh, on a personal note, I have met some of the, uh, and worked with some of the uh, original Mumford Point Marines. Um, they gave so much and received so little. One person that comes to mind today uh, of the Mumford Point Marines is uh, Mr. Turner Blunt, who just recently uh, passed away. He was one of the original Mumford Point Marines. He was also my boss when I worked with the city of Jacksonville. He was actually a city, city councilman and a business person and always uh, a friend to me and my family. I never heard, I never heard uh, Turner complain about anything. He was always upbeat and he was always uh, ready to face uh, controversy and vote uh, without any personal feelings about it. He did a very good job, and I would like to honor him by having a moment of silence for him and his family. And I think Miss Sadie is here somewhere. Sadie Blunt. Thank you, Sadie, for, for coming today, and thank you for your contribution 
it was a pleasure to see you like always. Uh, let's have a moment of silence for Turner and his family. I appreciate that. Thank you a lot. Turner was a pillar of our community and he will surely be missed. Please pray for Turner and his family. Turner may rest now knowing that he made a difference for his community, his city, and Onslow County. What a tribute it is to have the Mumford Point Marines uh, here today. Thank you, gentlemen, for coming, and thank you for your contribution. Thank you for your sacrifices. And if it wasn't for you uh, that pioneered uh, this particular uh, endeavor with the Marine Corps and with the monument and your sacrifices, we wouldn't be here today. So my hat's off to you. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak this morning. It was an honor and a privilege to be here. Thank you, Commissioner Bright. Councilman Warden, would you please come forward? Good morning, all. Good morning. I bring you greetings on behalf of the city of Jacksonville, the mayor, and the city council, as well as a very grateful community of Jacksonville. I welcome the Monfort Point Marines, their families and descendants, as well as their friends and supporters to the ceremony. While today we acknowledge four more who braved discrimination, distrust, and truly had to fight for the right to fight. We also acknowledge those Monfort Pointers who are no longer with us. And like Jack, I have to give tribute and pay tribute to Turner Blunt, who has certainly passed. And as Jack stated, he was a uh, former member of the Jacksonville City Council. I've, I appreciate his service. And through his life and his legacy, he helped tell the story of the Monfort Point Marines. And we owe him a great deal of gratitude. He connected what he was to his daily life and lived a life that brought honor to his fellow Montford Pointers. In that spirit, I'm confident that Turner Blunt would be pleased with, with the mayor's one city campaign. For those of you who may not be aware, the mayor recently initiated a program where we'd, we promoted civility, respect for one another's positions, one another's opinions. We, we, we draw attention to our diversity, and yet through that diversity, we're strengthened through unity. And we certainly live in a very diverse community of Jacksonville. We have much to be thankful for. And, and this uh, One City campaign is titled, One City, Your City, Our City. <clears throat> the memorial that we're standing on is a tangible reminder of when that civility and that diversity and that unity was not practice. It's part of our history. I'm glad that we decide not to cover up that particular point in our lives, in, in our history. It makes us what we are and who we are today. Instead, we celebrate those men who fought through discrimination. We acknowledge that there was discrimination and yet we, we provide a memorial so that we can remember. And I think every one of us would agree that history is important for us to remember because it teaches us what, lay, what may lay ahead and makes us who we are today. This memorial stands for the 20,000 or so who were not properly recognized during that time when they were actually segregated from others. And this memorial does draw attention to that. Soon a second phase will, will begin, and our honors to those now who are proudly claimed as Montfort Point Marines will become even more grand. And we acknowledge that Jacksonville and the Montfort Point Marines are different today than, the, than in the era when they were young men. While the Montfort Pointers have grown gray, Jacksonville has matured, grown, adapted, and today celebrates our legacy as a caring community with the additional motto for our visitors to receive a hero's welcome. 
Today, we give that hero's welcome to the Montford Pointers, their families, and friends. My personal sincere welcome to all who are here today, and I, too, want to take a moment of personal privilege. My company was a part of building this monument. My hat's off to Houston Chanel and John Tate and their fellow building committee members for their labor of love. Uh, not an easy task for them, trying to raise the money, trying to come up with a design, and then put all the pieces of this puzzle together, and they did a fine job, and my hat's off to them. So to the Montford Pointers who are here, their families and all the others, as well as who watch this observance in the future, be it known that this community does care, and we welcome and give great tribute to the Montford Point Marines. Thank you. gentlemen, please welcome National President Forrest E. Spencer as he comes forward to offer remarks. Brigadier General Alfred, honored guests, ladies and gentlemen, and most importantly, Montfort Point Marines and family members present today, good morning. I bring you greetings on behalf of the National Montfort Point Marine Association Incorporated. Montfort Point Marine Day holds a special place in the hearts of the members of the association. On August 26, 2010, the first Montfort Point Marine celebration was held aboard Camp Lejeune. Present were many Montfort Point Marines who are no longer with us today. The events of that day became the catalyst for building the memorial and the foundation of how we honor and celebrate our Montfort Point Marines. While preserving the legacy of the Montfort Point Marine Association as being our mantra, the memorial project was reinvigorated that day when the rendering of the future memorial site was unveiled to the delight and tears of our membership. Now today, scant eight years later, that dream has become a reality. And our memorial, this memorial, is a tribute to the determination of our Montfort Point Marines and in its final stages of completion. Let me share just a few facts about this memorial. The plan for building this memorial began, began in 1991 when Boeing Company donated the first $20,000 to begin this project. However, actual building did not begin until February 2009. They arrived, they served, they lived, is the introductory story of the Montfort Point Marines told through the architecture, sculpture, and chiseled words. The bronze statue tells another triumphant story with this angle of incline representing the Montfort Point Marines' uphill struggle for equality. He is moving forward, armed with a rifle, transitioning from ammo supplier to infantryman. The M1A1 90 millimeter anti-aircraft gun was the standard anti-aircraft artillery weapon and the wall of stars. Assembled in formation represents the honorable service of the Montfort Point Marines who served. Built on a foundation of concentric circles that interlock to represent a nation, a core, and a society which ultimately came together to achieve equality and respect for all persons. The Montfort Point Marines Memorial is a historic monument and tells a story that needs to be shared and never forgotten. I encourage you to take time and view all our aspects of this memorial, replendent of this glory and at the, at the conclusion of this ceremony. Thank you and God bless. Thank you, President Spencer. Now, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, Colonel David P. Grant, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools, Camp Johnson. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. General Alford, General Maxwell, General Langley, welcome. Mr. Spencer, 
Commissioner Bright, Councilman Warren, thank you for being here today. To the Montford Point Marine Association and auxiliary members from both the national and local chapters, thank you for being here today. To all the commanders, senior enlisted, Marines, sailors, families and friends, thank you for joining us today in recognition of Montford Point Marine Day. Most importantly, to our very special guests this morning, the original Montford Point Marines, and to those Montford Pointers that can't be with us here today, thank you for your service and commitment to our core and country for these past 75 years. You're truly part of our greatest generation. I'm Colonel Dave Grant. I'm the commanding officer of Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools, Montford Point, Camp Johnson, North Carolina. For the past year and change of command, I have had the distinct privilege of being the active duty member who is a keeper of the Montford Point legacy. <clears throat> the history and legacy of the Montford Point Marines who train here continues to this day. It's a history that defines its beginnings in 1941, when President Roosevelt created the Fair Employment and Practices Commission and declared the armed forces would lead the way in erasing discrimination over color or race. Although there were protests within the senior levels of the Marine Corps, recruiting for volunteers began on June 1, 1942. However, it was not until August 26 that the first recruit, Howard Perry of Charlotte, North Carolina, arrived at Montford Point. The, ori the original recruiting target was for 1,200 recruits. Once trained, those Marines were planned to fill out the 51st Composite Defense Battalion. In December of 42, voluntary recruiting enlistments were halted for all services and recruits were now called up through the Selected Service Act. Due to the expected influx of black recruits through selective service, the 51st and 52nd Defense Battalions did not have the spaces for all the faces that were expected to show up here at Montford Point. So in March of 1943, the first depot company was created and quickly manned from trained Montford Point Marines. And in April of 43, the first depot company departed Montford Point by train for San Diego, California. It embarked aboard the USS Hunt, which was a destroyer, and, and they departed for Numea, New Caledonia, where the company joined the first base depot, thus making the Marines of Montford Point part of our history. The likes and deeds of the many are lost to the passage of time, but their legacy is woven into the Marine Corps history, and today it is represented by the formation and the color guard of Marines from 2nd Supply Battalion behind me. By the end of the war, there would be a total of 49 depot companies created in this fashion. All told, there were approximately 20,000 black Marines trained at Montford Point and about 13,000 of those Marines saw service within the Pacific Campaign. Their story continued to evolve as their performance within the Pacific gained recognition. That recognition is represented by the monument you see behind me. Starting as an ammunition bearer and transforming into a fighting Marine is the legacy and story of the Montford Point Marine. Several Marines emerged during this early period and have become recognizable names in Marine Corps history. Sergeant Major Gilbert Hashmark Johnson, Sergeant Major Edgar Huff. But most importantly, and to me personally, over the past year, I've met several of the original Montford Point Marines at various events and gatherings. Scheduled to be with us today is Mr. Spencer, Mr. Hooper, Mr. Wilson, Mr. Batista, and Mr. Preston. I've had the pleasure of attending several events with Mr. Preston, Mr. Hooper, and Mr. Spencer, and they have continued to visit and share their stories and experiences with both the young Marines who received their entry-level training here and our permanent personnel. And I will tell you, that slogan, once a Marine, always a Marine, it's embodied by these gentlemen. Through some of these events and their engagements with the Marines at Combat Service Support Schools, I believe it's good for them, but it's even better for us. I truly appreciate their time and whether it's been supporting the Montfort Point Marine Museum or Combat Service Support Schools events, 
They've always been here. And I will share with you something else, and we all know this. Time and service has a pecking order. When you get these gentlemen together, every now and then, there's a reminder tossed out that someone's still a boot, even after 70-something years have passed. <laughs> The path blazed by the Montford Pointers cut a wide swath through not only the history of our Corps, but that of our nation. They simply wanted to serve their country during a time of war, and they wanted to do it as Marines. The sacrifices they endured and the selfless service that they represented so well has resulted in the diversity that we see today in the 9,000 Marines that are trained here annually. Today's Marines come from all walks of life with ethnic and religious diversity, males and females. They are able and willing to accept any challenge and perform any task. They are U.S. Marines, and their willingness and ability to earn and represent this title is a direct reflection of the legacy of the Montfort Point Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for helping us honor our Montfort Point Marines today. Semper Fidelis. Thank you, Colonel Grant, for those inspiring words. Ladies and gentlemen, another round of applause to honor all of our Montford Point Marines. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it is now time for the recognition ceremony during which Brigadier General Alford, National President Spencer, and President Young will award congressional gold medals to the families of our four original Montford Point Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. Attention to orders. United States Marine Corps, Montford Point Marine Certificate of Recognition posthumously awarded to Gunnery Sergeant Leroy Lee Sr., Sergeant Virgil W. Johnson, Corporal Joseph Othello Johnson, and PFC John Thomas Robinson. In recognition of selfless service and sacrifice, the United States Marine Corps proudly honors the legacy of the Montford Point Marines. From 1942 to 1949, nearly 20,000 African American men joined the Marine Corps. Despite harsh conditions between fighting for democracy overseas and the denial of civil rights at home. After completing arduous and segregated basic training at Montford Point Camp, North Carolina, these Marines served with distinction during some of World War II's most challenging struggles in the Pacific. Some made the ultimate sacrifice. Others continued their service through Korea and Vietnam and back home in the continued fight for civil rights. Montford Point veterans are legends in the rich history of the Marine Corps. Choosing to put their lives on the line in the service to the nation, they advanced the cause of civil rights and contributed to President Truman's decision to desegregate the armed forces in 1948. 64 years later, the 112th United States Congress awarded the Congressional Gold Medal as the highest expression of national appreciation to the Montford Point Marines for patriotism and distinguished achievement. Collectively, all Montford Point Marines helped pave the way for many men and women of all ethnicities and backgrounds who served in today's military. Semper Fidelis, and God bless the Montford Point Marines. Signed, Robert B. Neller, General, United States Marine Corps, 37th Commandant of the Marine Corps. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated.
accepting the Congressional Gold Medal for Gunnery Sergeant Leroy Lee Sr. is his son, Mr. Leroy Lee Jr. Accepting the Congressional Gold Medal for Sergeant Virgil W. Johnson is his niece, Miss Penelope Johnson Brown. Accepting the Congressional Gold Medal for Corporal Joseph Orthello Johnson is his daughter, Miss Joy Marmon. and accepting the Congressional Gold Medal for PFC John Thomas Robinson is his son, Mr. John A. Robinson. Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for the outstanding contributions made by these Montford Point Marines. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome President Young as he returns to the podium. Colonel Grant, would you please return to the podium as well? <laughs> Colonel Grant is being awarded a memento for serving as a keynote speaker for today's ceremony. The inscription reads, Montford Point Marine Association Incorporated Camp Lejeune, Chapter 10, presented to Colonel David P. Grant, Commanding Officer, Marine Corps Combat Service Support Schools, Camp Johnson. Keynote speaker, 8th Annual Montfort Point Marine Day Congressional Gold Medal Ceremony, August 24, 2017. As we draw to a close, we'll be remiss that we did not pause to recognize several contributors. Thank you, Brigadier General Afric, for all of your support and your staff at Marine Corps Base. And thank the Marines from Supply Battalion, the platoon behind you, and the Color Guard. Before standing in formation is Marines from 2nd Supply Battalion under the command of Lieutenant Colonel Melissa Chestnut. And playing so beautifully is an ensemble from the 2nd Marine Air Wing Band. Thank you, gentlemen. A thank you to the community whose hard work is evident by today's outstanding event. Thank you to the committee that put this together. It is evident that you work hard and long to coordinate all these activities. There are many moving parts. Thank you, Onslow County and the city of Jacksonville and the Office of Tourism. 
Ladies and gentlemen, a round of applause for our Marshall Corps Marines here and across the United States who celebrate 75 years. The Marshall Point Museum aboard Camp Johnson will be open immediately following this ceremony for those of you who have yet to view the historical contents. Look for the flag of the 51st Defense Battalion flying out in front of building M101. I must remind the media to ensure that you are properly vested with PAO before entering the base. We hope to see you at 6 p.m., 1800 for us military-minded people. This evening, for an e event reception, as we host the reception for the families of the recipients. You will find details in your program. On behalf of the members of Chapter 10 and Auxiliary, Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the playing of Anchors Away and the Marines Hymn. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes our Congressional Gold Medal Awards presentation ceremony. Please join us for a formal reception in honor of the Montford Point Marines and their families this evening at 6 p.m. at the Montford Point Marine Building, located at 148 Bryn Mawr Road. Thank you for your attendance and your unwavering support of our Montford Point Marines. Have a great day. <laughs>